This is what most people see when they look at a tree. It's a quickly recognised icon, and it's what many will draw. And this is how an artist sees it. Mastering drawing, realistic drawing, can be a long journey, but every journey begins with the first step. The more you draw, the more you can't help looking deeper into the world around you. You will learn to experience the world as you never experienced it before. However, to translate your new vision to paper, you need to learn the basic techniques and then practice them until they become second nature. So get to know your tools, your pencils, and discover what each can do and how each of them performs. To help increase the possible marks made by each pencil, use a versatile point. Sharp needle points snap easily, wear quickly, they draw only a thin line and they require constant sharpening, which breaks your concentration and flow. I use the chisel point, and I suggest you do too. Basically, it looks like this. It has a flat face and a sharp edge. So when I mention either, now you'll know what I'm referring to. The flat face of a chisel point draws broad lines. Then just rotate the pencil, and you can draw thin lines with the edge. The broad lines are soft edged and the edge lines are sharp and hard. And until the length wears down, each use of the flat face sharpens the edge. Whatever point you choose, experiment to find the varieties of line that each pencil grade can make. This is a 2B using a flat face with normal weight. Weight, well weight means how much or little pressure you apply. This is a 2B flat face, but this time with lightweight. And this is a 2B using the edge of the point with a normal weight. And the slight rotation keeps the line sharp, unlike a sharp point that blunts quickly. And now let's try a hard grade. This is a 2H. As you will see, different grades produce different qualities of line. Changing the weight creates a variety of effects and values. Value? Well, value is also known as tone. It refers to the relative darkness and lightness of the mark or area of shading. And as you decrease the weight, you decrease or lighten the value. It's why we only need every other grade. And as you'll see, different grades produce different qualities of line. Soft grades, the Bs, draw with soft edges. Hard grades, the H's, draw lines with hard or sharp edges because they contain more clay and they don't crumble like the soft grades do. Follow along with the next exercises. Well, you need to because only experience will teach you how each of your pencils performs on your paper. That's the marks and the values that each can create. Draw five boxes, oh, about an inch square, two and a half centimetres and then label them 4B to 4H. First, fill the 4B box and make it black. No need to be tidy, just fill it in. Why not 6B or 8B? Well, you try them, you might like them. And personally, I find them too grainy. Is that as dark as it could be? Probably not, let's try again. Use layers and pressure if you need to. Don't be afraid to use pressure, as long as you don't damage the paper. But if you do damage it, you'll now know its limits. There's a reason that I'm insisting on your blacks being black. They need to be as dark as possible because they will add impact or presence to your work. The 3D information will be increased by the strong contrast and shadows and you'll have a much wider range of values to work with. Your drawing has to be between the white of the paper and your darkest value. And if the darkest value is mid-grey, you'll only have white to mid-grey to work with. And that tends to lead to a very flat drawing. When your 4B is sufficiently black, now repeat that with your 2B. Try to get that black too. Now your HB, and now your 2H, and your 4H. 
but don't use too much weight with the hard H grades. They will indent the paper and they might damage it and indented lines cannot be erased. I'm using a broad flat face for this 4H to ensure it won't damage the paper. I can feel it skating over the surface. If it had a sharp edge or if it has a sharp point, particularly a sharp point, it's far more likely to dig in and start raising the fibers. A word of warning, don't leave gaps, simply don't. Our eyes read an average value and gaps dilute the dark value that you intended. You can shade in any direction, vertical, horizontal, diagonally, do whatever it takes to remove gaps and holes. And circular shading will approach every hole from every direction. It's very effective. But even if you only shade in one direction, go back and fill the gaps. Here's the effect that gaps create. We see a mid gray, but this has alternate black lines and gray gaps. Now let's begin to darken those gaps. As it becomes darker, notice that even the smallest remaining gray content lightens what we see. Now that's black and the blacks didn't alter. We only darken the gray gaps. So try to make your shading solid. Now you have an idea of how each gray performs. It's time to look at adjusting the weight, how much or little pressure is applied. That's what creates the different effects and values. Draw five long boxes, about three inches by three quarter, 7.5 by two centimeters, and label them 4B to 4H. Begin at one end of the 4B box, at the left hand end if you're right handed, and create a dark line, as dark as you drew in the previous boxes. Now aim to reduce the value to white at the other end. Again, don't try to be tidy. This is just an exercise in finding out what your pencils can do. As you shade across, just reduce the weight. You have the white of the paper to refer to all the time. So aim to be halfway between black and white near the middle. And as you gradually reduce the weight towards the end, you should be just grazing the surface. And use a flat face. So your lines merge together. That's especially true of using the H's, the hard grades. Again, remove the gaps. You can shade to the right using less and less weight and then shade back to the left using more weight. And then repeat that until the gaps have been removed and it will also smooth your shading. Here's a tip. When you're trying to remove a gap, instead of trying to match your shading to the value on either side of it, as you approach it, look at the gap. Don't look at the line that you're drawing, look at the gap. You'll just watch it grow darker until it disappears. That's because the feedback from your brain to your hand will be focused on the value of the gap and not at what you're drawing. When you've finished, compare each box to the one above and below. You'll notice that each grade reproduces at least half the values of the adjacent grades. Try to match the value of the left hand end of the 4H box all the way up to 4B. Notice also how the harder H grades are smoother. That's because they contain more clay and the softer B grades are coarser and grainier. But you can use that to your advantage. For example, if you're drawing a rough surface, use a soft grade. You'll get that grainy appearance. And if you're drawing a smooth surface, such as glass or shiny china or chrome metal or water, use a hard grade. You'll achieve a much smoother finish. The values might be identical, but the perceived texture is being made very clear. For example, here the sky needs to be smooth, so we've used a hard grade, a 2H in this case. The same applies to the water. You expect it to be smooth. And the wet mud looks grainy because I used a soft grade. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to my channel for more drawing tips and tricks and explore all the videos with me at drawingmike.net.